Welcome viewers, I'm Braulio Rhodes, Executive Director of the Broward County Bar Association, and it's my honor and privilege to be interviewing Judge Stephanie Moon, one of our best here in the 17th Judicial Circuit. And uh, we're putting together these videos to celebrate Black History Month 2022, how quickly it comes. So with that, Judge Moon, welcome. Thank you. Wonderful, so let's get right into this. Um, talk a little bit about yourself. And so uh, when did you first join the bench and were you appointed or elected? Tell us a little bit about the process. Well, let's see. I joined the bench officially. My commission began January 8th of 2019, but I was elected in November, November 6th of 2018 to the six year term. I sit in a unified family court. I hear civil domestic violence injunctions as a general rule. Uh, the process of an election was overwhelming. It was nonstop for nearly a year out of my life, my husband and my daughter's lives. And we came together as a family and made the decision that uh, we would sacrifice for that year for me to try and accomplish my dream. So here I am. It's gotta be tough on your family. Um, you know, how do you, how do you prepare your, your spouse, your children uh, when you have to go through this? Cause I, I remember seeing you as well as others that being out on the campaign trail, it's gotta be exhausting. It was, it's, physically, mentally, emotionally exhausting. At the time I was a solo practitioner and I was running my law firm from my laptop. And uh, quite frankly, my husband and my daughter just agreed to um, a year of negligence. I mean, I was just gone. There was no way around it. Um, I did get advice early on that I should be either at home or on my way home by 10 o'clock on any given evening that nothing good could happen after 10 p.m for a judicial candidate and i took that advice to heart <laughs> it sounds like a good good advice although i i've heard it said differently something like nothing happens good after two o'clock so i guess for a for a judicial candidate that gets bumped up to 10 p.m oh absolutely yes <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk a little bit. We're talking about your family. Um, where is your family from and, and what was your upbringing like? Well, actually, I am a fifth generation South Floridian. I was born and raised in West Palm Beach, Palm Beach County. Um, I was born at Good Samaritan Hospital right there on Flagler Drive in the Intracoastal. And uh, I was raised by my mother and my grandmother in a relatively strict Roman Catholic home um, and uh, stayed in West Palm through high school, of course. I was in uh, Catholic schools my entire career, actually through college because I went to college at Loyola in New Orleans, which is a Jesuit school. Um, I am a member of the Louisiana Bar, although it's inactive. I returned here to South Florida in, Let's see, it was just after I graduated. So 1995 or so, my grandmother got ill. And so I returned home and I began working at the state attorney's office and then the uh, attorney general's office when uh, General Butterworth was the head of the attorney general's office. And then the United States attorney's office of the Southern District, I worked for Mark Jimenez. And um, let's see, then it was Berger Singerman and then uh, just before I ran, I had my own private practice and I had been in practice uh, as a solo practitioner for seven and a half years. My husband and I have been married 20 years and we have one girl in common. Oh, outstanding. I can imagine a strong uh, female uh, role models, Catholic. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> My grandmother ran a very strict home. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. She would be, I think, outside of the legal community. My grandmother would absolutely be um, the role model for me. She was all about education, both in and outside of the classroom. 
She had several degrees herself, a bachelor's, a master's, and then an educational specialist degree in mathematics. And so her uh, lesson to all of us, all of her children, as well as her grandchildren was education is the key out of poverty. So go to school, get your degree. No one can ever take it from you once you have that educational foundation. And so I took that to heart. Absolutely. A sage woman. Uh, I remember receiving the same kind of advice from my parents who, I mean, they were not educated, but, uh, you know, they said this, the same thing, go get your education because they can never take it away from you. And, um, you know, that's the way to better yourself. So. Actually, my mother, my mother is the oldest of seven and she took care of her youngest sibling, my uncle, while my grandmother finished her last degree. So wow. it was all about education. And my mother and I actually graduated from college in the same year. That's amazing. That's, yep. that's, that's special. Very so special. So it's never too late. Never too late. Never too late. Well, talking about education, uh, let's move over to cultural diversity. And sure. so do you believe it's important to have a culturally diverse bench? I do, not just for my own benefit, but quite honestly, I think it's important for the litigants, for the people who come to the court for redress of whatever issue they may have, to see people who look like them, to be confident that their views will be heard, that the folks who receive that information have a frame of reference that is similar to theirs and can relate. I mean, so often um, the value of diversity is that we're all from different backgrounds, have had different experiences, and you bring those life experiences to the bench. So it's important that our citizens in Broward County uh, are represented in every area of leadership in the county, including the bench. I have a follow-up, actually. Uh, do you think we've gotten better in Broward County uh, at really being inclusive on the bench, having more diversity, especially proportional to the various minority groups that we have in Broward? I mean, you know, between the Black and Hispanic community, that's those two groups comprise, I would say, the majority, a majority of the county. So I think you're probably right. I think they do comprise a majority of the county. They don't comprise a majority of the bench, but they don't comprise a majority of leadership in, in other areas either. Most assuredly, I believe we have improved. Um, it's kind of hard not to improve if you just keep building on those numbers. Um, but it's representation does matter. It is important for people to see themselves in positions of leadership, and there's always room for improvement. So you may have already answered this, but uh, what motivated you to change your path from from being a lawyer to to you know, aspiring to jump on the bench? What, what, what was that? Was there one thing that kind of clicked and made you want to do that, or just a natural progression? Well, people like to say it's a natural progression, but I really don't think that's true. There are so many lawyers and quite frankly, so few judges that I don't think it's a natural progression. I felt that um, being on the bench, I felt that I could bring something unique to the bench. Part of that representation, absolutely. But you have, I don't know if you will recall, I actually applied through the Judicial Nominating Commission um, a dozen times over wow. a decade span of time. And I was recommended to the governor a few times, but I was never the choice. And so when I decided to run, part of the uh, decision to run as a candidate was taking my future in my own hands because I knew that there was no one who would outwork me 
on the campaign trail. And I felt that that kind of determination and not letting no be the final answer when it was something that you truly believed you had to give that I could serve. And I do view my position on the bench as one of service. You know, this is this is not an ivory tower. This is not an easy job if you want to do it right. It really requires a great deal of dedication and effort. And you don't always see that on the other side because you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. But uh, I felt that I had a very unique perspective that I could bring to the bench in that I had been both a criminal litigator and a civil litigator. I had worked as a prosecutor. I had worked as a criminal defense attorney. I'd worked as a civil plaintiff. I'd worked as a civil defense counsel. I'd worked in the federal system, in the state system. I'd served as a special master handling ad valorem real estate tax issues. So I felt that I had a really broad uh, spectrum of experience and that that would serve Broward County citizens well. So I thought I'd throw my hat in the ring. And as we were talking before this interview, I mean, these are things that I'm learning about you. You know, I've known you probably, you know, about 10 years, um, mm -hmm. you know, progressively more. And, you know, some of the stuff I didn't know. So that's why it's so important to do these <laughs> kind of things. Yes. The breadth, the breadth of your experience. Yes, but I, I recognize that I am very reserved, that people don't know me well um, and, and may make assumptions about me just based upon what they see or what they hear. Um, I think people do that for judges as a general rule. You know, you, once you put that robe on, everything you say is amplified. And there are very strict ethical rules that we're all aware of. And we want to make sure that we reflect well not only for each other, but for our circuit as a whole. Um, but I'm just a regular everyday person, just like <laughs> everybody else. I love it. So everyday person, tell me yes. who, who, who in the legal world uh, was your role model that you kind of look to? There may have been more than one, but please share. Honestly, I greatly admired a federal judge. Uh, she sits here in the Southern District. Her name is Ursula Ungaro, and she is brilliant. And I always felt when I appeared before her, whether she ruled in my favor or not, that she heard me out. And that was really important. And I, I thought that the way she managed her courtroom and her docket was incredibly impressive. She has a brilliant mind. She has a very quick wit. Um, and the more I appeared before her, the more my regard for her grew. And if I had to choose a, a role model for uh, serving on the bench, it would absolutely be Judge Ongaro. She's a class act from beginning to end. I, I hope you're listening to that, Judge Ungaro. <laughs> she knows. She knows. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Judge, uh, on a lighter side now, yes. um, let's uh, love to hear about, uh, I'll throw some things out and you, you tell me what you want to share with us. Uh, tell us if, if you have a hobby that you enjoy uh, okay. or your favorite music uh, or maybe uh, a favorite dish. Any of those I'll take, and I'll take all of them if you want to share. <laughs> well, let's see. A hobby that I enjoy, I am a spa girl. I love going to the spa. It helps me to relax and get pampered a bit. I've been to spas all over the world. Uh, I really, really enjoy just taking some time and decompressing. Um, let's see, music. My favorite genre of music is jazz. Miles Davis is my favorite jazz musician. Actually, I don't think I would have managed to graduate from law school if I had not learned about Miles Davis kind of blue. I think I had it on repeat continuously 
Uh, I really admire his musical talent. And my favorite dish, I think any and everything with chocolate would qualify. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Probably half of our viewers. <laughs> yes, I am a milk chocolate girl, not dark chocolate. I'm not looking for health when I indulge. <laughs> And uh, white chocolate is a little too sweet for me, but if you put milk chocolate on virtually anything, I'll give it a try. I'm with you, Your Honor. <laughs> well, Judge, uh, thank you uh, for taking time today to talk with me. I really enjoyed this. It was great to learn more about you. I appreciate it. It has been my pleasure, Braulio. Thank you. Be well, Judge.